Hello, today I would like to address a very important topic in our New Covenant series, and that is the topic of baptism. Um, I'm certain that everybody has their thoughts and opinions on this very important subject. Um, but let's go to the Bible and see if we can learn something new and fresh. Um, I don't believe you need me here, so I'm going to be in the background, if that's all right with you. We start with Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Paul says, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? His response to that question is, by no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, notice that we were baptized into his death, and we have been united with him in a death like his. And because we have been baptized into his death and united with him in that death, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. Paul, in writing to the church in Colossae, says very similar things. And you, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. Baptism is a type of burial, and it is a burial with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died for us, and we are buried with him in baptism. Paul, again, writing on the subject of baptism in Galatians chapter 3, says, For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. By being baptized, you are baptized into Christ, and you take on the clothing of Christ, his righteousness. And a group heard a message similar to this years ago on the first day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, verse 41. And this multitude that heard, many of them believed. And it says, those who accepted his message were baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. When you accept the message, the natural response is to be baptized into Christ, to be clothed with Christ, to be in union with Christ, to be buried with Christ, to identify with Christ in his death for our sins. In Acts chapter 8, we find a very interesting story of Philip going to a small city of Samaria and preaching. And it says, and when they believe Philip, as he proclaimed, notice what he proclaimed, the good news of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. And the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had received the word of God, so they sent Peter and John unto them. When they arrived, they prayed for the believers that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit was not yet come down on any of them, Notice that they did not receive the Holy Spirit in water baptism. Water baptism is not the same as receiving the Holy Spirit. But notice what the author of Acts says. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were baptized in Jesus' name. They were buried with Jesus. They identified with Jesus. They put on Jesus and they were resurrected, or going to be resurrected when they received the Spirit, in Jesus' name. 
Acts chapter 2, verse 36, the very first message ever preached by the new church after Jesus Christ had died, been buried, resurrected, and ascended into heaven. He sent the disciples to Jerusalem to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Afterwards, Peter got up and he preached to the multitude. And all the people of Israel then are to know for sure that this Jesus, whom you crucified, is the one that God has made Lord and Messiah. He told the people of Jerusalem, you've crucified the Lord. You've crucified the Messiah. And when the people heard this, they were deeply troubled. Well, who wouldn't be troubled? You killed the Savior. And they said unto Peter and to the other apostles, what shall we do, brothers? And look at what Peter responded in his answer. Peter said unto them, each of you must turn away from your sins. King James Version says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins will be forgiven and you will receive God's gift, the Holy Spirit. Again, notice that they were to be baptized in Jesus' name. There's a verse in Matthew 28, 19 that has caused some confusion down through history. Jesus, prior to ascending to heaven, told his disciples to go, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. This verse is very similar to one that was found in Isaiah 9-6, a prophecy concerning Jesus Christ. And look at this. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And so I would ask you, what is the name of the Everlasting Father? Who is this Prince of Peace? Who is this Mighty God? And what is his name? You see how we can diagram that sentence? What is the name of the Everlasting Father, of the Prince of Peace, of the Mighty God? She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins, the angel says in Matthew 121. The name of the everlasting father, the name of the prince of peace, the name of the mighty God, the name of the child that was born, the son that was given unto us, is Jesus. Now with that understanding, let's take a look at Matthew 28, 19. Jesus said, go and baptize in the name of of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. We understand that that name is Jesus. A little bit of history for you. Encyclopedia Britannica says baptism was actually changed from the name of Jesus to the words Father, Son, Holy Ghost in the second century. You can find that in the 11th edition, volume three, page 365. The Caney Encyclopedia of Religion on page 53 says the early church baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus until the second century. Hastings Encyclopedia of Religion, volume 2 on page 377 says Christian baptism was administered using the words in the name of Jesus. Volume 2, page 389, it says baptism was always in the name of Jesus until the time of Justin Martyr, which was around the second century. The Catholic Cyclopedia, volume two on page 435, you'll find here the authors acknowledge that the baptismal formula was changed by their church. Neshev Herzog, Religious Encyclopedia, has these words. The New Testament knows only the baptism in the name of Jesus. Volume one, page 435. Finally, Hastings Dictionary of the Bible on page 88 says, it must be acknowledged that the threefold name of Matthew 28, 19 does not appear to have been used by the primitive church, but rather in the name of Jesus or Lord Jesus. In Acts chapter 18, we find a very interesting story. It says, at that time, a Jew named Apollos, who had been born in Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was an eloquent speaker and had a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord and with great enthusiasm. He proclaimed and taught correctly the facts about Jesus. However, he, only, he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue when Priscilla and Aquila 
hurt him, they took him home with them and explained to him the way of, more correctly, the way of God. He needed a little additional details. In the next chapter, notice it's about the same person. While Apollos was at Corinth, in Acts chapter 18, verse 24, it says, at that time a Jew named Apollos. So Apollos is at Corinth. Paul, traveling through the interior provinces, arrived at Ephesus. It says that Apollos, who had been born in Alexandria, came to Ephesus. So we see the connection here in this story. There he found some disciples. And Paul asked them, did you receive the Holy Ghost when you became believers? And they responded, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit, they answered. Paul began to question them. Well then, what kind of baptism did you receive, Paul asked. They said, the baptism of John. It says that Apollos knew only the baptism of John. See the similarities here? Paul said the baptism of John was for those who turned from their sins, and he told the people of Israel to believe in the one who was coming after him. That is Jesus. And notice, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That is the way of God more correctly, to be baptized in the name of Jesus. These people were rebaptized in Jesus' name. Another story in Acts chapter 8, we see an angel of the Lord said to Philip, get ready and go south to the road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. So Philip got ready and he went. Now an Ethiopian eunuch who had, was an important official in charge of the treasury of the queen of Ethiopia was on his way home. He had been to Jerusalem to worship God and was going back home in his carriage. As he rode along, he was reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Philip ran over and heard him reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, and he asked him, uh, do you understand what you're reading? The official replied, how can I understand unless someone explains it to me? He needs to find the word of God more perfectly, more correctly. And he invited Philip to climb up and sit in a carriage with him. The official asked Philip, tell me, of whom is this prophet saying this, of himself or someone else? Philip began to speak, starting with the passage of scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they traveled down the road, they came to a place where there was some water, and the official said, here is some water. What is to keep me from being baptized? Notice that Philip, in explaining about Jesus, talked about baptism, talked about the death of Jesus, talked about being united with Jesus, buried with Jesus, putting on Jesus. The official ordered the carriage to stop. Both Philip and the official went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. What is to keep me from being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? I think that's a question everyone needs to ask. One of the signs of the Messiah, true Messiah was that he would baptize his followers. John the Baptist was asked, why do you baptize if you are not the Christ? It is expected that those who follow the Messiah, the Christ, will be baptized. To be baptized is to be identified with Jesus as the Messiah. Baptism is not just for church membership. Baptism has spiritual significance. Jesus became our example at the River Jordan by being baptized prior to beginning his public ministry. Believers are buried with Jesus through baptism. Repentance is a type of death and baptism is burial. Baptism needs to be administered in the name of Jesus. This fact reveals a marvelous truth. The name of God is Jesus. The New Testament church called on the name of the Lord, Jesus, in baptism. It is to be noted that the name of the Lord is Jesus. To be baptized in Jesus' name is to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. From the first day that the church began, Christian baptism has always been in the name of Jesus Christ. On the day of Pentecost, Peter instructed those who would gather to hear him preach. His instruction included a command and a promise. The command was, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. The promise was, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are used in reference to baptism by Jesus in Matthew 28, 19. Notice how that the word name is singular, baptized in the name not the plural names, not baptized in the names of the Father 
end of the sun. In this verse, it seems that Jesus is pointing toward a parallel Old Testament verse to show his disciples that he was indeed the fulfillment of Isaiah's messianic prophecy. Isaiah had prophesied that a child would be born, a son given. This son also would be called the everlasting father. The son would be the mighty God, the spirit. There was no confusion about whom Isaiah is speaking in this prophecy. In Isaiah 9, 6, the name of the everlasting father and of the Son, and of the Almighty God is Jesus. In Matthew 28, 19, it is clear that each of these titles also describes Jesus, and Jesus only. The name is Jesus. Several hundred years after Christ, a series of church councils attempted to change baptism to the diverse methods practiced today. In our generation, millions of believers are finding that it is better to discard these old traditions. Get back to the Bible method of baptism. Have you already been baptized? Paul found disciples who had been baptized, but not in the name of Jesus Christ. He baptized them all over again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How were you baptized? This is serious enough to require prayer and study. Here's some verses that I would encourage you to look up in your prayer and study time. And if you decide and determine that you want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, then I would encourage you to go to the Facebook group, International Coffee House, and let us know about your study and your interest. Or if you want to be baptized in Jesus' name, contact your local United Pentecostal Church. You can find it at upci.org. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. And um, I trust that it's given you something to think about. Um, we hope and look forward to hearing from you and possibly um, there'll be some interesting news coming from you for us. Lord bless you and um, talk to you again later.